Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm going to be doing a full makeover on this dining room table. I actually found the table for $30 off Facebook Marketplace, and my mom got the chairs for me for free, and it just so happened to be a matching set. So I'm going to do a quick makeover on this table and just bring it back to life and make it more, you know, my style and all that. So let me show you the products that I'm using, and then we'll get started. All right, so here are the products that I'm going to be using today. I have this Minwax Polycrylic in the Clear Satin. I have the Color Place Classic Interior Paint Onyx Black Flat Paint. Another Color Place Paint and Primer Mix Flat Paint as well. This is the Bright White. I have some Wood Stain in the Dark Walnut. An Electric Paint Spray Gun. Um, a little face mask, so whenever I'm sanding and using my sprayer. I have some sponges here, paint brushes, some sandpaper disc for my sander, and a little bit of this plastic just in case I need it. All right, so my first step was taking the 60 grit sandpaper and sanding down the entire tabletop because my original plan was to stain the tabletop a dark walnut color. That way it was just, it would pull in all the brown tones from around my house and I just love the idea of it, but after sanding the entire table down and getting it down to the bare wood, when I applied the dark walnut stain in like a hidden area just to test it out, guess what happened? It pulled very yellow just because it just the wood tone and the colors, it just didn't look right and it didn't match with anything else in my house, so I decided, you know what? go back to the drawing board and try something new. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave in the footage of me sanding the table down because I put in all this work for nothing. But if you are planning on staining your table, you definitely wanna you know, sand it down really well. I used a 60 grit and then turned around and used a 220 grit to smooth out that really rough sanded area. And on the areas that I couldn't get with the sander, I had to hand sand. So y'all, I worked really hard <laughs> at sanding this table down just to turn around and paint over it. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I feel the same way. So like I mentioned, I had that dark walnut stain that I tried in a hidden area and I absolutely hated the way it looked. So I decided to sand it back down, start over. So I took this white stain that I had thinking that, you know what, this would be perfect. It would, you know, still show the wood tones through it. But guess what happened? It seeped in and you could see all those yellow tones still. So I was like, nope, this isn't going to work either. So then I went back to the drawing board and decided to paint the entire table white using the um, Color Place Flat White paint that I got from Walmart. It was just the Walmart brand, it's really inexpensive. And the reason I chose the flat paint was because it works very similar to chalk paint. I actually love the finish of it and it's cheaper. So if you're wanting to paint a piece of furniture but you can't afford chalk paint because it can be kind of pricey, try flat paint it actually works just the same as chalk paint but it's a fraction of the price okay so at this point i did take the leaf out of the table just because i was having a hard time reaching across the table to get those solid brush strokes and i really wanted the table to look seamless you'll see why i needed to take it out anyway in just a moment um, but i did paint it the same exact way so that way if we ever need it it's available and um, i can just add it back in there but after getting the entire table painted solid white, once it dries, it leaves a very chalky finish just like you, it would like chalk paint. So now y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but after painting the entire table white, I took this penetrating stain, it's the Minwax brand, in the dark walnut color and I'm staining over the entire table where I painted it with that flat paint. And after getting the entire table stained, then you'll see what I'm gonna do. And it turned out gorgeous. So here's a better view at the beautiful color that this created. So instead of it being like a really dark stain, it ended up being this really light wood tone, which would work really great if you're into that style. So this is definitely an option. You could leave it just like this, but 
of course, y'all know I can never just leave anything <laughs> the way it is. I always have to take it, you know, take it to the next level or try to be unique in some way. So after getting the entire table rubbed down with this stain, I am going to very, very lightly dip my paintbrush into some white paint and add some white brush strokes going across the table. After adding all the white, I went around using that same sock that had just leftover stain on it and I went over some of those white areas that I felt like were a little too stark white and just kind of helped blend those in a little bit better. I also rubbed around the edge of the table just to give it more of a worn out look. For the base of the table, I used the flat paint once again, and I'm just going to do three coats of this, and then I ended up going in and distressing it a little bit using that same wood stain that I used on the top of the table, the same technique, just kind of rubbing it in random areas just to give it a worn out look, and you'll see how that looks at the end of the video. I didn't film this portion just because it was, it was really hot, y'all, and I was sweating my butt off, and at that point, I was just kind of over the table, but you'll see at the end how it ended up turning out. All right, so now moving on to the chairs. Right here, I was testing out my paint sprayer for the first time, <laughs> and it didn't go as planned. After trying the paint sprayer for the first time, I definitely need a little bit more practice with it or need to find one that's a little bit better. So before the paint dried and left like huge splotches, I went ahead and rubbed it in using my paintbrush. Now you'll notice that this chair is broken. That one little spool is cracked. I will fix that later. I just, I don't really know how I'm going to fix it. I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to give you a quick update on the table and chairs. So quick update. I got the base painted um, with two coats, just the flat white paint. I still have, you know, obviously some areas to get, but tabletop is done. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do black chairs or white chairs, so I painted one of each, well, started to paint one of each, just to make that decision, and I'm going to go with black. I just feel like the black stands out to me for some reason, and I'm going to go with my gut feeling, so I'm going with the black. Um, this is once again a flat Walmart brand paint. I just started, like I said, I just tested it out to see how it would look with the table. Um, and it's going to take me a while because the paint sprayer that I bought, it works really good. It's just really complicated to mix the water and mix the paint. For me, I'd just rather just paint the thing with my paintbrush, so that's what I'm going to do. After about 10 minutes of painting the chair with the paintbrush, I quickly realized how detailed these chairs were and how hard it was going to be to hand paint every one of these chairs. So I ended up going back to the store and getting some spray paint just to kind of speed up the process a little bit. And I will be using the Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's a paint and primer mix and I'm using it in the matte finish farmhouse black. I really love this spray paint. I used it on my rocking chair when I did my front porch makeover and it is holding up great with no sealant on it. So I'm going to use it on the chairs, but I'm also going to seal it. 
So I personally think with it being a really good paint and sealing it, it should hold up just fine. Um, I'll definitely keep you updated as the you know time goes on and let you know how the finish holds, but I don't think I'll have any issue. So in case you're wondering, I uh, was able to paint all six of my chairs using about six cans of spray paint. I still have a little bit left in one of the cans, so almost six cans of spray paint was able to do all the chairs with two coats. Now, just make sure you keep in mind that everybody spray paints a little different with different angles and different distances, so what works for me might not work for you. It's always better to have enough than not enough. There's nothing worse than getting almost done with your project and having to go back to the store like me I always do that I never buy enough I'm like oh I'm gonna make it work with like the cheapest way possible and it doesn't <laughs> go as far as I thought it would so I ended up having to go back to the store mid spray painting and tell me why I went to the store with spray paint all over my face and didn't even notice Honestly, it was pretty funny. I got to the register and I had like three more cans of spray paint with me because I had only bought three to begin with. And this nice, really nice older man was like, um, you can set your stuff down if you'd like on the counter where his stuff was. So I put my cans of spray paint down and he looked right at my face and he said, um, honey, you have a little something on your nose. <laughs> I was like, do I really? Like, I immediately felt embarrassed because I knew I had, like, black on my face. Sure enough, I got in the car and looked in the mirror, and there was black spray paint all over my nose, all under, like, on the top of my lip. It was so embarrassing. But anyway, moving on, I'm going to be using this Minwax Polycrylic in the clear satin finish, and I'm going to seal this table. So for the first coat, I usually keep it very thin and I try my best to make sure that I get every single area for the first coat just very lightly and then I just add more coats and I make it a little thicker each time. I also try to go all the way across the table with the sponge, that way there's no like weird marks left behind because that will happen with poly if you're not careful. You have to make sure you go from one side to the other or sometimes you'll get like these little bubbles or brush marks, you know, in there and it just doesn't doesn't look you know professional doesn't look good also <laughs> I'm skipping a step today I don't recommend this you should sand in between each coat of poly but just being real with you I have I have sanded in between each coat and I have skipped that step before and both of my projects have held up the same I've never had an issue every piece of furniture though is different and I think it's important to do whatever you feel like is best for your piece of furniture. I am not a pro at this. I don't know everything and that's why a lot of times you see me doing these projects and I'm very open about steps that I skip and stuff like that and I'm just not a fan of sanding. If I can avoid it, then I will and I avoided it today. <laughs> so I'm just sealing the table. I did three coats of poly on the table and the chairs.
whenever I was applying the poly to the chairs, every time I got in like some of the tight, the tighter areas, a lot of the poly would kind of gather up and just, it was just too much. So what I did was I had an extra sponge on hand that was dry and I would rub that over those areas and it would soak up any of that extra poly that was gathering. That way I didn't have any like huge clumps of the polycrylic, you know, on the chair. I wanted it to be as smooth of a finish as possible. All right, so now it's time for the full reveal. Here's just a quick reminder how the table looked before, and here it is now. Alright, so that's going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me transform this table. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and I will see you in my next video.